What's up guys and welcome to the biggest island in the Coral Sea. We are in the middle of the ocean in between Australia and New Caledonia. And this landmass, what you what we are currently standing on, is the biggest island. It's pretty tiny. But what I thought is since we've been living on a boat for the last two weeks, and we've got another two weeks out here, I wanted to share with you my tips for shooting underwater photos with Voila! A GoPro! Also all the music that you hear in today's video is from the amazing team at Epidemic Sound. Huge shout out and thank you to them. Today's video is sponsored by them. More on that later in the video. But first, let's get stuck into the tips. Now, one of the most frequently asked questions I get is in regards to the housing and to knock that one over straight away, my answer is yes. You've probably seen the housing in that dual mount that I was holding before. Now. That's only, you only need that if you're gonna be taking photos like deeper than 10 meters. So if you're actually scuba diving, then you have to use that because the camera is not gonna function very well, if not at all, <laughs> without that underwater housing. Those things are about 100, 100 bucks. You can pick them up on the GoPro website, link in the description. But you can just shoot, if you're shooting in water like this, which is two, like three to five meters or anything, <laughs> shorter than 10 meters in depth, you can just use the camera itself. I highly recommend for those of you that are shooting without a dive case, is that you get into a sound habit of rinsing and cleaning your GoPro after each time you shoot in salt water, because the salt water will start to corrode the prongs and it will affect the camera in the long run. So if you want to preserve the camera, make sure you give it a good, um, nice fresh water rinse after you've shot with it. But yeah, I love taking photos, so let's jump into the blue and let's go and get some photos. to think that places like this exist where not that many people get to set foot on yeah set foot on come to explore experience well one because it's extremely difficult to get here you have to have a vessel that is big enough to cross a channel but small enough to fit into a lagoon so it can't be a monohull <laughs> for example you couldn't get here with a monohull no that's ruled out <laughs> exactly so you need to have a catamaran with a very short hull, I think they call it. Yeah, and we also need to sail for four days. Yeah. <laughs> Did we mention that? So <laughs> We've been sailing for four days. This probably looks amazing, but we haven't shared any of the content of us like being in a cabin and doing night watches for the three non-stop days of sailing it took us to get here. Three non-stop days. That's like 72 hours of being in a very confined space, waking up, um, and doing like four hour shifts each to to make sure that the boat was on, on, on the right track and that... It's not hitting anything. I think that's one of the main concerns with... Thanks for the commentary. <laughs> <laughs> for um, doing night watch and whatnot, you want to make sure you're not running into anything. You know, there might be loose containers, there might be some coral. <laughs> you have to be careful of what's out there, but it's crazy because we haven't seen anything. We've been crossing the open ocean for three days now and we haven't seen dolphins, we haven't seen whales. I mean, it's just nothing. It's just water. <laughs> it is. It's it's, love. And also, fun fact, Cato is also home to the sea snake, one of the most poisonous snakes um, in the world, if not the most poisonous snake. Supposedly, if you get bitten by a sea snake, You're done. you pretty much die instantly. You're done. And <laughs> interestingly, they're, you're, they're very well frequented, so there's a good chance we will probably swim with sea snakes because they're very curious but they're not always aggressive <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so we'll see we'll see if we can catch one on the gopro one of our favorite accessories when talking about gopro photography especially underwater is the dome that's right um, there's a couple on the internet, a couple different types. Um, they all work in the same way, where you have this concave sort of lens that's in front, it's plastic, and you're essentially um, getting a bigger surface area to take your photo. 
allowing you to get that 50-50 split effect, which is 50% underwater, 50% over water. The important point though, when shooting dome, it is most successful when you have a subject that's both on top of the water and under the water. In that case, Jake, what are we gonna use? Well, today you can either use something like a paddle board or in our case, we have this massive catamaran behind us, which is gonna look awesome. Um, other tips that we would encourage you to explore is also action shots. You might have someone jumping off um, the catamaran or doing something cool underwater. It's really up to your creativity. You can just explore what you wanna do with both parts of the frame. Um, and what has often worked best is like a 70-30 split. So making sure the dome isn't exactly 50-50, I guess perpendicular with the surface level because there is water magnification. So you could have it just tilted either forward or backwards. frequently asked questions that I get and I always list it in the description of my YouTube videos is where I find music for these videos. So whether it's a tutorial, whether it's a vlog or a travel film, I find pretty much all of my music from Epidemic Sound. Now, the awesome thing with Epidemic Sound is that all the music that you use from their library, if you're signed up as a member, is royalty free, which means you will not get copyright strikes on your videos. Um, you can use these songs that you download from Epidemic Sound uh, on your Instagram, on your Facebook, pretty much on all of your social media, and you won't get claims, copyright claims on those videos. Now, I think it's super important for those of you that are interested in monetizing your YouTube videos to use royalty free music. One of the coolest features that Epidemic Sound has, which is very different to other music licensing sites, is the fact that they curate music for you based on your your YouTube channel. So if you connect your YouTube channel, it will crawl through and have a listen to the songs that you've previously used in your videos and curate content and curate a track list that will show up as soon as you log in to their service, to their website. And it's super cool because it's literally where I go to very first when I'm looking for a song for my YouTube channel. Now, some of my favorite artists that I frequently listen to are Oi, double double O Y Y. He's one of my favorite artists there. Um, Cosby, C-O-S-P-E. I'll put a playlist of my favorite songs in the top link of the description and they also offer a 30 day free trial. Jump down there in the links and get some awesome tracks for your videos today. Look at this weather. That's what I call a freaking amazing opportunity to shoot incredible photos. One of the first things that we're gonna do today is we're gonna work with this thing, which is the light, the natural light. As you can see, like right now, this glistening section of the sun is gonna create some amazing light rays which pierce through the ocean, which is your cue to get in the water and start playing around with it. I highly recommend shooting underwater photos, sunrise and sunset. And the other thing which also looks incredible is water clarity or visibility. These are all things which are paramount to capturing incredible photos. Look at the visibility that we have right here. That's, that's insane. Like you can see the ocean floor. So something we bring on every adventure and an easy way to improve your underwater photos is to do a site inspection, a little recce with a mask. Before we shoot our photos, we, just, we like to just jump in before we even have the camera and check out the underwater environment, check out the contours, the landscapes, the coral structures and think like what would that image look like if we were to put ourselves here uh, contrasted with the white sand as opposed to being on top of the coral or in this nice little um, watery section next to this beautiful bank of coral. So something simple but will always improve your GoPro photos underwater. Pro tip, definitely 
definitely invest in a good mask. They can be expensive, but having a mask that you feel comfortable in and that is your own is an absolute must have for any diver and photographer out there. Mine is a single lens. Jake opted for a dual lens option. Um, really depends on the style you want to go with. Yeah. Mine also have windows on the side, so I actually have more visibility. Make sure you try on a mask before you buy it. I don't recommend buying them on the internet because you want to make sure they fit your face structure. So. <laughs> yeah, you want to be comfy. You want to be able to be in the water for as long as possible to keep shooting and getting those shots. All right, let's get down there and let's take some bangers. When we first start shooting underwater photos, I think it's really important to understand what settings you are using so that you can maximize the content that you capture underwater. I love to set the camera up. If I'm just capturing JPEGs, because I want to edit the photos for social media after the trip, then I just like to shoot in burst, but I also just like the output to be standard, which means I'm just getting a JPEG as my output. However, for those of you that love editing and you want to take your photos to that next level, I recommend shooting in RAW plus JPEG as your output. You'll, you'll receive these .gpr files and what you can do with them once you edit your photos is unbelievable. But to do that, you just have to go into your camera settings and make sure you set your output to JPEG plus RAW and you also want to be shooting either bursts of 10 over 3 or 10 over 1 depending on how fast the action is. The reason why we love to shoot bursts is because I personally, when I first started diving and taking underwater photos, couldn't hold my breath very long which means I could maximize what was going on underwater for only spending a little bit of time down there. Guys, thank you so much for checking out today's video. I hope you've enjoyed exploring Cato Island, this beautiful remote spot in the Coral Sea. If you have enjoyed the video, punch that thumbs up button. And if you want to learn more, be sure to click the card up here or on the end screen, there's another card. You can check out more videos linked on my channel. Uh, if you want to take your GoPro photography even further or there's things that I haven't explained, then check out our masterclass. We have a whole masterclass which shares everything from zero to hero, improving your photography and filmmaking with this little camera right here. <laughs> uh, thanks for sharing the stoke and I'll see you guys in the next video. Jaya. Peace! <laughs>